Hi, welcome back to Pia Tech Talk. If you ever wanted a web interface to your application, then take a look at mongoose.ws. They have a red made a suite for you and made it uh, easy for you to implement the web interface. Fully customizable and uh, don't require much of a coding at, at all. So I thought that we should start with uh, dipping our toes into this pool and uh, see how easy it is and just to get an LED hello world uh, function to start working. And please may I also have you to uh, hit the subscribe button, it will be highly appreciated. And if you like the video, please hit also the like button, it helps the channel a lot. So hope you find this interesting and uh, eager to start. Let's go. To start with the mongoose, we go with the URL mongoose.ws and that stands for web server. And here we can see that there is a smaller greeting screen and they, we can watch a demo. And you can see all the uh, big names that are actually using the mongoose uh, service or the, the software. So we start by clicking build your own web UI. And then we get greeted by this, welcome to Mongoose Wizard. And there we can have two options. We can integrate this web UI into an existing C project. So if you, for instance, already have a project that you thought that, oh, this is a good project and I would like to incorporate also some uh, uh, web UI into my project, then you choose this one and it will integrate into that project. Uh, but in my case, I don't have any, uh, so I will just create a new C, C project. And also you can see here that I create a new C project, then they have templates already made for us for several development boards. But if you don't have a development board that suits these, then you choose with the first option integrated with your own C project. But I have a project and uh, I have a demo board that I will be using. So then we get greeted by this uh, menu here. And we first of all need to select where we would like to have our files placed. And I have selected a workspace called mg.workspace underscore workspace. And uh, then there we have three more questions. And that is what the target architecture that we are going to put our project on. And uh, there are some from ST, and if your board is not here, then you have to choose the existing project uh, alternative in the former uh, menu that we showed. Uh, there you can see all the devices that they have already made templates for us. And I will be reusing this H563. But it's not only ST, you can also put it on NXP. Here we have the Team C which is quite popular in the community market. And that is built on the RTX uh, 1062. But you also have on NXP's own development boards here and also on the Freedom MCX boards here and uh, the new wireless chip with uh, Wi-Fi on it. Uh, you have for Infineon XMC, uh, maybe there will be coming some PSOX as well. Uh, we have some TIs, Espressif, that is usually popular. Raspberry Pis, for, of course, you can put on Arduino, you can put on Nordic wireless Bluetooth chips, Cepher, uh, and you can put on a Windows or a Linux host. Uh, but we do it like this, we put it on the 563. Then we can uh, go to the build environment and IDE. There you can put on GCC uh, Make, and uh, that is maybe coming in the future video. I will be using the Cube IDE in this application, and you can also use for the Ceph for Build platform, but I will be using the Cube IDE. And then you can choose if you would like to have an FreeRTOS or bare metal, and remember up here you could actually have Ceph as well. Uh, but in my case, uh, I will don't do, I will not do so much in this project, so I will stick with the bare metal to just keep it simple. So we'll hit next. Then we get three different uh, dashboard templates. Default template, and that is full feature template, and it's a single LED toggle, and uh, there is a totally blank. So I will go with a single LED. But if you would like to use for a default, you can see here in the background uh, how, how this looks. And it's fully, fully customizable, so you can 
delete stuff here if you're not happy with it and, uh, and you can add and stuff but I, I would like to have it on uh, so we just do this again nuclear cube ID bare metal next and I will have a single lead in my project like so and I have seen sometimes when you go back and forth uh, there is some hiccup and I just do a refresh on the web screen web reader I'm using um, edge in this application so this is a very simple uh, demo and there is one toggle switch and that is on or off uh, that is all you can customize uh, almost everything on this page you can add a lot of stuff here uh, you can change the logo you can change to different menus here so you can actually have a menu system and it will be coming in the future video I hope uh, you can change your name, for instance, put your uh, brand name or something like that. But in my application, just to get things started, I will just have this toggle, an LED. So I just pulled in my uh, file uh, explorer here so we can see the MG workspace. So if I now just hit this general the C code, it will be populated. So there we have all the files that have been created for us. Now we actually don't have to do so much more in the, this in this uh, Mongoose web builder. We can uh, minimize this one and we can go to stm 32 cube IDE. And uh, we have already a project here. We don't have it in the stm 32 cube IDE yet, so we need to import it. So we go with import existing project into workspace. And there we can see which uh, path, and if you don't find it, you just hit the browse and you find where you have uh, stored this project. And then it finds that there is a project in this, so it will use that one. So now we can see that there is a new project up here in the workspace. And if we see here, we have the core with the normal includes and the source files. And uh, what is special now then is this mongoose uh, directory where all the mongoose files are present. And you also have an IOC file there as normal. So when you want to do some add-ons to it, uh, that is done. You don't need to do anything. You can just build a project as it is now. So it's built without any errors and any warnings. Okay, so I have brought in my Nucleo H563 board and I have just connected my USB-C connector on this end and on the other end I have just connected my Ethernet connection to my uh, uh, switch. So it's connected to my internet. So this is the first time that we launch the debugger, so we need to create a profile. So we hit the debugger and then we also do like this we hit the st link server and we can just scan to see that it has communication to it and now it has been created a profile for us so we can just hit the debug next time great so now we are in the debugger so we hit start there and then we get all this debug information that is created for us and what we are interested in is the IP that we got from our DHCP and that is uh, 168.0.43 so I take that uh, the same URL 192.168.0.43 that we see up here and uh, we hit enter and then we set, see that we get some information uh, connected that I'm connecting from another address here and we can see the UR, the web page that we created here it looks the same so this is on the h563 board and now we can see that we can toggle this uh, button here and whenever we do we can see that there is a post so it's posting some information for us here but on the board there is happening nothing so we need to have something that glues together the mongoose with our uh, stm32 co code and suitable enough 
they have thought about this. So we just break that code. Uh, since it's a glue that we need, they have created a glue file for us. So we open the glue file and uh, we make some changes to it. First of all, we can uh, remove some of this information. Like that. So we include, first of all, the main.h file. So we get all the HAL definitions and such uh, available for us here. And then we stay, start by taking data. And uh, we now also need to verify the LED where it's at. And uh, I think I have it here somewhere. The user led one LD1 there. So that is uh, do not uh, fit. So there is uh, the PB0 is the default one to LD1. So port B, pin 0. That is running the LD1. Okay, great. And uh, we need also to have the set value. So we hit L. And there we have the GPI of B, port pin 0, and LED 1. Great. And uh, the reason for it, you saw it was shaded, and I just hit the tab, is the reason I'm uh, running Copilot in the background. And I have enabled the completions, so it helps you with the suggestions for the code. And if you're happy with the code, you just put the tab, and it will be there. And then you can just change it accordingly, so it speeds things up. We built a project again, uh, zero errors, zero warnings, and we can uh, start the debugger. And we can run the code. And I think that we will get the same IP, yes, so we get the for free again. So we do like this, and we refresh it. And now we see that we still have the LED one here. And if I now make room for, I remove this one. And I put the board down here. Now we can see if I hit the LED one, it turns on. see the small LED there. Oh, sorry, the green one. No, I said red in the beginning and that, that was an error for me, my side. So it's a green LED. So now we have communication from here. Even though it's fine to do like this, to write directly into the mongooseglue.c, there is a major drawback on it. And that is when you uh, go to your project and make some changes and you uh, re-generate the code. The mongooseglue.c and all the mongoose files will be overwritten. And uh, I will just see if I can show this here. So here we have the project. And if I now then expand it a bit. And we generate the C code again. So now we have generated the changes. And I didn't make any changes to it. And uh, we go back to the project, and we build the project. Uh, then we can reopen the mongooseglue.c. You see here now that all the changes that we did to the mongooseglue.c have been altered and uh, overwritten by the mongoose uh, code generator. So what you can do instead is not doing any changes in the mongooseglue.c. Uh, you go to your main file instead. And in the main file, you go over under this, uh, where you have the other functions here, under user code 0. And then you can copy some of the files here. You can get the 
these files and you can copy them here and you ch make some changes so you remove the glue and you write my instead and then you remove this portion of the code and the same for the set you remove the glue and you write my and then you just enter these informations that we had in the glue file before like so so now you have created new functions two new functions void in the get lets and void set lets uh, the same uh, information that we had prior in the mon glues glue but uh, this way we don't change anything here and uh, whenever we generate regenerate a project it will overwrite this but it doesn't matter because we haven't made any, made any changes to it so our changes will remain as long as you put it within these sections start and end co user code so this is in the area user and co uh, user code zero uh, so those two functions we have there and then we need to f find where we actually start the mongoose uh, there we have it, it's under the user begin to run mongoose. So before that, uh, we need to put in a uh, uh, line of code. So it's mongoose set HTTP handlers, and then we have the lets, and my get lets, and my set lets, and my get lets, and my set lets are these two here. So we make a new try on this one. So now I have made the changes to it and we build the project. And we had zero errors and zero warnings. And just to make sure that uh, this is the main C and this is the mongoose uh, glue.c. So we haven't made any changes here. But we hope that we will manage to get the same result anyhow. So we debug it. And we run the code. And I just had got a new IP address because it's another day. And uh, so the new I IP address I got from the <coughs> DHCP server was 133. So I make a refresh on this one. And we can then see that we have communication to the LED one. Anyhow. So this is a better way to do it and uh, then if you make any changes to the mongoose wizard and update on something then all your changes won't be overwritten so that is a better way to do it so this was the first steps with the mongoose and uh, the this can be built on uh, very much so uh, i hope that i will make uh, coming videos on it with more advanced topics but this was just to dip the toes in the water to get acquainted with the software hope you liked it and found it interesting please don't forget to subscribe i think it's like 95 percent that of my viewers that are not subscribers so it doesn't cost anything but i will appreciate it heavily so just hit the subscribe button and a like if you liked it and if you have something to tell me put it in the chat below Till I see you next time, stay safe. Bye.